So I woke up this morning to a text from Mark at A1. He saw the video. Now even though Mark is closed on Sunday, A1 Auto Parts still gets things done through the Advanced Auto Parts store in downtown Hebron. Now A1 Auto Parts in Buckeye Lake is a CarQuest store, but since CarQuest and Advanced Auto Parts are one and the same basically, Mark gets me taken care of even when his store is closed. So I bring my parts back to the shop, bring in my case antifreeze, my new radiator, my new radiator cap, and I compare the radiator that's in the truck to the one that I just bought, and they're an exact match. So that gives me the green light to go ahead and start taking the truck apart. Now while the radiator was in the truck, it was difficult to see exactly where it was leaking from, but now that I've gotten it out, you can clearly see that the tank was leaking where it met the core. I went in to use the restroom and when I came back out, my brother Jeremy showed up, Uncle Bucko. You can always tell when Jeremy's around, he leaves a trail of caramel fucky autos everywhere he goes. Anyway, Jeremy got out the shop back and swept out all the debris that was caught between the radiator and the AC condenser. Then he set the new radiator down in the truck and began hooking up the oil cooler lines for the engine and the transmission. Once we had the radiator installed and everything hooked up, we fired up the truck and began putting coolant in the system. And just to be safe, Jeremy went ahead and hooked up his pressure tester to pressurize the cooling system and check for leaks. Once it checked out okay, I took it out for a little test drive. When I came back, we put it back in the shop, went over everything one more time and deemed the truck was ready to go. Now, since I plan on leaving first thing in the morning, I figured it'd be a good idea to go ahead and have Jeremy help me hook up the trailer to the truck and just go over everything real quick before he heads home. And that's when we run into yet another freaking problem. The trailer fenders are falling off this thing. Oh my God. It's almost 500 miles down to Tennessee one way and I can't go down there pulling a trailer with the fenders falling off of it. So, Jeremy and I decide to take the trailer up to the farm, back it up to the shop, and we'll weld this trailer fender back on before I leave first thing in the morning. I greatly appreciate how my brother always comes through for us when we need him. And it's always last minute <laughs> before we leave to hit the road. I don't know what we'd do without him. So anyway, Jeremy takes a die grinder to it, cleans up all the slag, and gets this thing ready to weld this trailer fender bracket back on. First, he's got to warm his hands up because it's so freaking cold, and we've got the shop door open. But he manages to get a pretty good weld bead on this thing with real good penetration. I think we're good to go. Send the bill to Little Enos. Now, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know what Sunday night means. It's time for the Sunday night letdown. Pot roast night at Cracker Barrel. So I haul her little butt in there. She comes through the front door and she makes a beeline for the maitre d'. She wants to get her name in as quickly as possible. But guess what? As usual, it's too late. They ran out at four o'clock. Like, I wouldn't have got it, to me, early is like five or six, so I wouldn't have got it even if I was early on my terms. I told the boy they need, on a cold winter day like this, they should make three times the amount of pot roast. Everybody's gonna want it. Honey, what? they don't make that much pot roast because nobody likes it. Not true, it's their Sunday bestseller. 
You just don't know. If it was their best seller, they would make enough so that they could sell it all night. You don't get it. Their best seller is the chicken fried chicken and dumplings. What I get. So they make plenty of it so they can make it all night long and serve it. You should start trying to eat what I eat. Then you won't have these problems. No. You're so hard headed. All right, welcome back everybody. So, I got the dually fixed. It's ready to go. It's hooked the trailer out there. The trailer's fixed. Uh, I think I'm ready to go in the morning. Um, so, about this truck. <laughs> uh, I put a clip of it in there as a thumbnail on last night's video. And uh, the reason I didn't say for sure what I was doing is because, you know, I don't know this fellow that I'm buying a truck from, but uh, I asked him if he had PayPal, I would send him a deposit. And he doesn't have PayPal, and he said he wasn't worried about a deposit. But uh, given the amount of interest that was in that truck, um, I was questioning whether it would still be there uh, when I got there. Uh, but... Uh, I spoke with the man today on the phone, uh, and I've spoke with him a little bit through Messenger. And it turns out he's been watching this channel for a while, on and off, uh, and has some idea uh, where the truck is headed. He knows who I am, uh, so he knows I'm serious. And um, so anyway, uh, I feel pretty confident the truck's going to be there when I get there tomorrow. He... Uh, he told me, don't worry about it. The truck will be here when you get here. So I feel pretty confident that I will be coming home with that mint green 64 C10 pickup. Now, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> the answer is pretty simple. Um, <laughs> Billy's truck is tore down and it's going to be down for a while. Tommy's truck, I don't know when it's coming back. Uh, I, I can't answer that. That's out of my hands. So... Uh, my Nova isn't anywhere near being ready to go or make any content with it. Um, I got to find something to do. Uh, we're going to work on Kenny's car, but uh, Kenny's car doesn't need a whole lot more work done to it. So in order for me uh, to have something to do out here to make content in the shop, uh, I decided that maybe this old pickup truck would be a fun project. Uh, for me and Kenny to work on and Vicki has been wanting uh, an old Chevy pickup truck for a long time uh, The 71 C10 the mint green one that's sitting out here That was actually a truck that I helped Tommy go purchase and it came from Tennessee as well um, And that was gonna be Tommy's truck, but Tommy has lost interest in it so It's sitting out there in a million pieces <laughs> And right now it's a little bit farther gone than I care to deal with in the middle of winter. Um, however, oh, and there's a little bit more to it than that too, because uh, Tommy's truck was the right color. That's Vicky's favorite color, that mint green. And that was the factory color, but that truck had been painted dark gray. Uh, and so all that enamel gray has to be sanded off. And by the time you sand it off, you take off a lot of the original color as well. And so the patina on that truck isn't gonna be quite what we wanted. Uh, it's not gonna be a natural patina. Whereas the 64 C10 
is nearly perfect for what we wanted. Uh, the 64 C10 does run. However, the fuel tank needs cleaned out. He's just got it running on a, a water bottle or something with gasoline in it. Um, the truck, I believe, is mostly original. Uh, this gentleman that I'm going to go buy it from found it in a backyard uh, a few weeks ago, brought it home, cleaned it up. He's put all new brakes on it, all new brake lines, new master cylinder, and four brand new tires on the original wheels. Uh, so it does run. Uh, however, it is a six cylinder, three speed on the column. Uh, that doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, the three speed on the column, I don't think that's going to stay. And I guarantee you the six cylinder is not going to stay. Uh, I've got a 350 in here on the engine stand that we were going to put in the 71 C10. And I also have a few other engines laying around here uh, that can be put to use if need be. But this one I've got on the engine stand over here is probably the best one that I can put in it right away easily. But I'm hoping that that engine has a uh, very mild or stock camshaft. I don't know what's in it. It came out of a, a late model like an 82 or 83 C10 pickup truck. It was kind of a hot rod, but it's got low compression uh, heads on it. I don't know what pistons are in it. I know nothing about it. I bought it just the way it is, except for I cleaned it up and painted it. Um, but I was told it ran and ran good when it came out of the truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that little small block down in this 64 C10. And I think me and Kenny can tackle that pretty easily here in the shop. Uh, and I think it's going to be fun. Now, outside of putting a V8 in it, right, and it's a patinaed truck, what are our plans with it? Okay. Vicky and I would like to have an antique Chevy truck, just like this one, with original paint patina. Uh, and we would like to have it lettered, uh, hand-lettered, painted, hand-lettered. Uh, like they used to back in the 50s and 60s um, and have it lettered up like a shop truck uh, for an old speed shop. Uh, I would like to find some period correct uh, decals, you know, maybe a few little hot rod style decals uh, to make it look authentic. And I would like to keep any gauges or tachometer, whatever we find, I would like to keep it period correct. Um, that means at least in the early 70s or maybe even mid 60s, like a tack and some gauges from back in that era. Um, and I wanna keep the truck period correct for the most part. Um, I will be putting air conditioning on it. Uh, I'll get a vintage air kit and we'll put air conditioning on it and I will make sure that it has power steering and probably power brakes just so it's comfortable for Vicki to drive because she wants to be able to run around in it. Um, but I think it's going to be really cool. I think it'll be a good addition to the garage. I think it'll be good content. I think everybody will enjoy watching this thing come together. I think it's going to be a really neat project. I'm excited about it. I know Vicky's excited about it. Um, and this is going to be something for us. We're buying something for us and we're doing something for us for like the first time in a long time. And uh, I'm kind of excited about it. I wish Vicky could have gone with me, but unfortunately this thing just popped up uh, on Marketplace. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get it lettered and we're going to clear coat the truck uh, to save the patina that's on it. And I would like to probably just keep the original wheels on it and the original hubcaps. Like try to save the truck as if it's like 15 years old or 10 years old. Uh, what the truck would have looked like at 10 years old or 15 years old. Um, and try to maintain it in that state uh, and set and save it that way. Uh, we're going to recover the front seat, put a nice 
seat cover on it and get it lettered. That's gonna be the first things we do. And I've already got someone lined up here from Columbus, uh, a friend of mine who deals in classic cars and muscle cars and street rods uh, from Columbus, who I've dealt with before, uh, has given me some information and some uh, contacts for lettering. And I've already spoken to that gentleman and he's interested in coming out here next week to take a look at it and give me an estimate on doing the lettering and everything that I want to do. Uh, and um, this fellow also uh, does upholstery work at his shop in Columbus. So uh, the seat can get done there. But I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, and um, it's going to be the first thing that I do for my channel, specifically for my channel, uh, for me and Miss Vicki. So hopefully everybody is uh, staying warm. It's pretty cold here yet. It's going to be real cold the next two days. I've asked Tommy to stop and check in on his mother, keep an eye on things here, and he said he would because um, it's going to get cold, and uh, Kenny will probably be in and out of here, I would imagine. I think he's going to work on his Camaro a little bit, or uh, he's talking about doing some insulating here in the shop. This wall right here over my shoulder is a west wall and it has no insulation uh, and that's kind of a problem. And uh, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen here while I'm gone, but Kenny plans to be here and do some work and he'll either be working on the shop or maybe working on his Camaro, one or the other. And then uh, Tuesday, I plan on headed back home, heading back home and I'm gonna stop and see Miss Gina Rose down in Kentucky and uh, Gina with the shirt gallery. If you remember Kent Rose from years ago, um, Gina was married to Kent Rose before he passed away. And she's a very, very good friend of ours. Uh, she does all Billy's merchandise for him. And uh, I intend to use Gina for my merchandise that uh, I'm getting ready to introduce. So I'll vlog this entire trip down and back and uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm pretty excited. Um, I can't hardly believe this is happening. This is like a dream come true for me to retire and uh, do what I wanna do, when I wanna do it, how I wanna do it. I just, I never thought this day would come. But thank you to everybody who watches and likes and shares the channel. Um, very, very thankful. And so is Vicki. We greatly appreciate everybody. I'll see you maybe tomorrow or Tuesday. Depends on my Wi-Fi signal at the hotel. If I can find one down there, I may end up sleeping in a truck. I don't know. We'll see. Good night, everybody.